FGOE, that's Fibre Channel over Ethernet, was seen as possibly the next big thing in storage networking when it first came out. It's really fallen out of favour over the last few years though, and you would have been much more likely to see iSCSI being used if you were deploying SAN over an Ethernet network. All of the major storage vendors do still support FCUE though, and it's possible that you will still run into it in real world deployments, so let's cover it here. Fibre channel over Ethernet became possible when 10 gigabits Ethernet came out. That provided enough bandwidth to support both data and storage traffic over the same shared network infrastructure. Before 10 gigabits Ethernet, our servers had 1 gigabit Ethernet cards in there, and that was really pushing it about having enough bandwidth to run both storage and data traffic over that same physical card. FCUE uses the Fiber Channel Protocol, FCP, exactly the same as Fiber Channel does, but it's encapsulated in an Ethernet header so that it can run over Ethernet networks rather than over physical Fiber Channel networks. QoS, quality of service, is used to guarantee the required bandwidth to the storage traffic so it gets the service that it requires, and FCUE retains the reliability and performance of Fiber Channel because it works the same way. So why would we use FCUE? What's the big selling point of it? Well, if you look here at traditional Fiber Channel, and we're looking at the server in the middle of the slide here, you can see that it's connected out to its clients over the normal Ethernet network and it's connected to its storage over a fiber channel network. So on the server, we have got two ethernet network cards and we've got two fiber channel HBAs. So we've got four ports in the server and they're cabled up to the switches. So we've got four cables and we've got four switches. So with fiber channel, you end up with four of everything because you want to have those redundant networks with two sides. So you've got four adapters, four cables and four switches. The big benefit with FCUE is that the infrastructure gets cut down in half. Because you're running both the data and the storage over the same network infrastructure, looking at the server now, the NIC and the HBA, which were separate before, are now replaced with a single CNA. That's a converged network adapter. A converged network adapter looks just like a normal network card, but it's a special card that supports FCOE. So now we've got two adapters, two cables, and two switches. We've cut the infrastructure down in half. So you can see that that can have really good cost benefits. So Fiber Channel over Ethernet, FCOE, it works exactly the same way as native Fiber Channel because it's using the same protocol underneath. It's using FCP. And FCP works the same when it's traveling over a native fiber channel network, the same as when it's traveling over an ethernet network using FCUE. We just add an ethernet header outside the FCP information to allow the traffic to go over an ethernet network. So it works the same way. We still have the WWPNs on the initiator and the target, and it still uses the floggy, the ploggy, and the process login processes. In FCUE, both the storage and the data traffic is going out over the same shared physical interface, that CNA card on the same shared physical network. The storage traffic uses FCP, so it requires a WWPN, and the Ethernet data traffic requires a MAC address. So both your storage traffic works as normal as it would with Fiber Channel, and your normal data traffic works as it would normally with Ethernet as well. But... The way that Ethernet data traffic and FCP storage traffic work is completely different. So how is it possible to have them both running over the same physical interface? The answer is that we virtualize the physical interface, that CNA, into two virtual interfaces. It gets virtualized into a virtual network card for the data traffic, and that's got a MAC address on there. 
and it also gets virtualized into a virtual HBA with a WWPN for the storage traffic. And the storage and the data traffic are split into two different VLANs to keep them separate from each other. So looking at that with a diagram, you can see this big box here is my server, server one for the example. And in the server, I've got two physical cards, two physical CNAs here, that's the big card here. So I've got CNA one at the top and I've got CNA underneath. And then that physical CNA is virtualized into a virtual NIC on both of the CNAs. So I've got virtual NIC one on CNA one and virtual NIC2 on CNA2. And the virtual NICs both have a MAC address on there. So you can see VNIC1 has got its MAC address and VNIC2 has also got a MAC address. And the traffic to the data VNICs gets sent over the data VLAN. The CNA is also virtualized into a VHBA as well. So on CNA1, I've got VHBA1. On CNA2, I've got VHBA2. And the VHBAs have got WWPNs on them. And the traffic to and from the VHBAs is in the storage VLAN. So if we add it all together, you can see the big card, that's my physical card. It's virtualized into a virtual NIC with a MAC address and a virtual HBA with a WWPN. The data traffic goes on the data VLAN and the storage traffic goes on the storage VLAN. And I've got two physical cards in my server for redundancy. Okay, last thing to tell you about FCUE. Fiber Channel is a lossless protocol. It ensures that no frames are lost in transit all the way through from the initiator to its target. But Ethernet, however, is not lossless. TCP uses acknowledgements from the receiver back to the sender to check that traffic is reaching its destination. And if an acknowledgement is not received, the packet will be resent. So loss is expected in Ethernet. With Ethernet, the traffic gets sent, acknowledgements get sent periodically back, and if an acknowledgement gets missed, then it gets resent. So it's normal to have loss. So that gives us a problem if we're trying to run Fiber Channel, the Fiber Channel protocol over an Ethernet network, because Fiber Channel expects no loss. So we need a way to ensure that our storage packets are not lost while traversing the Ethernet network. And the way that we do that is with PFC, Priority Flow Control. That's an extension for Ethernet that is used to ensure lossless delivery. So it's an extension to the Ethernet standards. PFC, Priority Flow Control, works on a hop by hop basis. So it's not just supported on the endpoints, the server and its storage. It has to be supported on all of the switches in between as well. So every NIC or every CNA and switch in the path between the initiator and the target must be FCOE capable. So you can't just go and use standard Ethernet switches for FCOE. You need to use higher end switches with FCOE support on them. Okay, that's everything I needed to tell you about FCOE. And we covered Fiber Channel in the previous lectures. Let's have a look at it next in the lab.